click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now learning the module number 6 where different designs associated with different types of springs are learned. In last session, we have completed one numerical which is based on design of helical spring which undergo both static as well as the fluctuating loads. In today's session, we are going to start with a new part of this lesson which is nothing but lip design or lip spring design. In the previous to previous session, we have already seen different terminologies associated with lip spring and its significance. Let's quickly revise what are the significances, what are the terminologies and what is the design procedure. So let's begin. So students, you can see on the screen different terminologies and the schematic associated with this lip spring given. If you see this properly, this is how the structure of lip spring is explained, where different plates of this particular schematic are used, where this particular thing or this particular dimension is called width of the lip spring, this is the thickness and of course these are the different lengths and if you see there is a curvature, so there is always some radius associated with the lip spring. If you see, lip springs are made up of different plates of certain thickness and certain width. Of which there are different sections which you can see and there are different divisions for them. For example, if you see the length of the springs or the flips are going to change or are changing gradually and that's why they are called graduate level lips or graduated lips. The number can vary from 3 to 12 also but it depends upon the given application. Further if you see two lip springs or two lips of that particular spring they appear to be of same length and they are called full length springs. They may be two or three numbers and last one is the master lip. Master lip is the longest one and it has the ends bent so as to form the eyes. These are called the eyes of the lip spring. Now, when these eyes come into picture, the eyes are actually bolted together with the application. For example, vehicle, automobile, where these lip springs are used. So, the body of a vehicle will be bolted with this particular eye with the given lip spring. Further, if you see, the total force acting on that particular one lip spring is divided or it is assumed to be divided into two sections. So, the load is 100 Newton or 100 kilo Newton. 50 kilo newton on either side will be applied accordingly. Next is the center to center distance as far as the master lip spring is concerned. It is assumed that 2L is the length so accordingly the parameter will change. If length is 100 millimeter the center to center distance will become 200 millimeter and so on. So these are the important terminologies. Now, of course there are many assumptions which are made in the analysis of this spring but since the syllabus is restricted to the design aspect and the applied design aspect we are not going into the depth of the derivation part. Let me just tell you that the complete structure of flip spring if you look at the force applied it carries the transverse loads and hence for transverse loads whatever the stresses come into picture maybe bending stresses shear stresses or any other normal stress are considered together for this particular derivation and based on that certain formulas are made up which we are going to look at in today's session so there are few formulae which we have segregated based on the given course of course you can find all this formulae in the book of design data so these are the four formulae which we are going to use for this particular numerical and accordingly the terminologies are mentioned. This is the bending stress based on the load acting, the length, the number of lips. The total number of lips is of course the addition of graduated number of lips, the master lip and the full length lip. So in that case the full length lift plus graduated level lips numbers are collected to find the total number of lips. Then it is the width and this is the thickness of any one lift and hence it is the transverse load, the length, let us write it center to center distance divided by 2. This is P maximum divided by 2.
n is the number of flips then it's the width of a lip is the thickness of leaf this is the full length leaf or leaves number this is the graduated leaves this is the coefficient of elasticity or Young's modulus C as usual is a relationship and last is the length which is already mentioned So n is the total number of flips. Further, the index is specified using this empirical relation. Let me repeat that the course does not interrend the derivation part. So we are going to apply it directly and you can find this formula in the book of design. And this is the pre-stress which is required to make the spring initially at the given equilibrium. Now this is an interesting topic we should discuss on. The structure says that they are curved in nature. Basically, the transverse load is going to act on them. Somehow, if you see, each and every spring which is graduated has different radius of curvature. In short, since they don't have the equal radius of curvature, they will have always some nipping point in between them. So nipping point is nothing but, for example, this is the 11th spring. And let us say this is the 12th spring. In that case, there is always some gap that remains between them just because the radial differences are there. And hence, in order to make them one body, they are initially stressed by means of certain application. So they will be hold, they will be held together by means of certain load and certain bolts. And due to this, water action takes place that is called nipping of lift. For this, we require certain initial force and that is called P initial. So it's like pre-stress concrete blocks. We apply the stress initially so that they all will be brought together in this manner. So there's always some force acting already on that lift. Plus, whatever the application load comes onto it. And that's why it is also an application of variable load formally. So as we were discussing about the initial load, this particular formula will give us the empirical relation between them. So with this particular formula, let us move ahead. Deflection of the given spring, lift spring, will be the deflection or the individual deflection of each and every lift and the addition. And hence, to find out the maximum deflection experienced by this particular lift, this is an empirical relation we can use. Of course, let me repeat that these relations are also provided in the design data book. So, need not by hard length. Basically, the relation is made up of the force acting, the length, the Young's modulus, width, thickness, and the number of springs. So with this particular example or with this particular numerical aspects, let us conclude that the design of leaf spring is based on mainly number of the leaves, the force, the length and the material properties like elastic limit. In next session, we are going to look at the numerical based on leaf spring design. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda.